Hi, Kenny. Welcome to the Green New Perspective Spotlight. Hi, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So for starters, can you tell us more a bit about yourself and iGen, the company we are dedicating this episode to? iGen, our mission is to regenerate Earth uh, using robotics and AI, starting with agriculture, which we're very, very passionate about. And my name is Kenny Lee, and I'm company co-founder and CEO. Can you tell me how did you, you know, get into agriculture and like you said, regenerating the earth? How mm -hmm. did you get interested in doing that and um, starting the company? This is my second career. Uh, I'm a uh, repeat entrepreneur. So I actually grew up in cybersecurity space. And um, after having a successful exit in, a, in my previous company in the cybersecurity industry, I was really looking around for the next big challenge. Uh, I had two criteria in in that search for the mission and one was it had to be really really hard um, to really push me and that's a personal goal and then as a company um, the goal was to be really impactful and in search for that goal i came across climate as being one of those industries that really needed help but it's not just climate as a single industry there isn't a climate industry per se it's climate challenges combined with a uh, existing industry. And uh, as I was searching that out, um, realized that agriculture is a pillar of a society. Uh, I knew very little about it. If you move the needle, it's one of the most impactful industries that you, you could play in. There's about a quarter of our global emissions. We all eat three times a day, and it is one of the most underfunded industries um, even with the climate investments that are going into the various industries. And how does iGen works to solve these issues? Our first goal was to actually just get on the farm, um, look around and see where can we play in the vertical space. And we really liked the fact that all food starts on the farm. And um, the goal was to really search for an opportunity and work with growers and farmers to figure out how we can we can deliver value to them. And with our mission to decarbonize and remove chemicals, we found that weed control was one of those areas and challenges where farmers really needed help because there weren't alternatives, to, scalable alternatives to the current solutions that are out there today. The current solutions are either you use chemicals to destroy the weeds or use manual labor. And those were a really difficult set of solutions to work with from a farmers because one is you're making a trade-off between effectiveness and efficiency and potential impact on the climate and, and, our, and our human health. Now we know long-term effects for some of the chemicals that are in our food. And then secondly, uh, manual labor is prohibitively expensive or they do not exist um, in certain parts of the world. I talked with quite a lot of agri-tech companies here um, on the podcast. And one of the challenges is actually educating farmers and introducing them to these new technologies. So how do you deal with that? The way that we solve the problem in conversations with the farmers is that we didn't really view ourselves educating the farmers. We had an open mind and we allowed them to teach us of how they would like to for the solution to be designed. Again, we're delivering an alternative to chemicals the most effective way that existed before wide use of chemicals was actually using what we all know as the hoe, which is essentially a stick and a blade at the end of it. There was this, literally one time I said, hey, Mr. Farmer, how would you design the robots? And they took me to the back of the shed and said, here's my hoe from back in the 50s. This is what I used to do when I was a kid. Um, use this and then they, they got the hoe. And then it was it was a fun and playful conversation, but it was like if I put that onto a robot that we designed that is autonomous and solar powered, is like, would you pay me money? <laughs> is there an exchange of value? And the answer was like, hell yeah, that would be an amazing uh, product. And so having an open mind like that uh, enabled us to be successful in our uh, customer acquisition strategy. And do you have some examples how your solutions, your robots, improved farm operation and reduced reliance on chemicals? Yeah, the, the real challenge today is what we call herbicide resistant weeds. So even if farmers go through and spray, let's say glyphosate, which is the number one chemical in the world, that it's the weeds are not responding or, or dying as well as it used to. 
And so you got these escapes that are growing all over their field. And so this just past this growing season, we work within close to 500 acres and deployed about uh, 50 robots. The robot's been able to live out in the farm, which what I mean by that is it slept on the farm and it woke up on the farm uh, throughout the entire growing season, uh, removing the weeds. And what were some of the challenges you faced while developing the tech? The fact that farming is like outdoor manufacturing. You got big, heavy machinery going through manufactured soils and, and you're trying to force nature to be uniform. Yet you're fighting against mud, you're fighting against wind, rain, animals, insects, all different types of pests and temperature, and you're, you're not in a controlled environment. And uh, that is an incredibly difficult challenge, you know, not only for our team, but anybody that is, any farmer that is working outdoors, that is why it's so hard and taxing and a very difficult job. And so the elements of, the, of nature uh, is something that we've found to be uh, some of the most challenging and helped us really think through the edge cases of the automated system. And when we talk about the market itself, which marketing strategies do you use or communication strategies to position yourself and differentiate yourself within the, the whole agritech field? Yeah, so specifically with the, the growers and the farmers, we do not push the agenda of clean energy or clean tech up to the forefront. The reason why we're, we're not doing that is because first you have to deliver value. And the value is not the fact that it's using solar power, right? The real innovation from our perspective is that we're cramming all of these advanced technology into a 100% solar powered robot. Like it's amazing. Like that, that, is, that is something that only um, some of the best engineers in the world would be able to design, which we believe we have on our team. But from a customer's perspective, if that does not deliver value, none of it matters. So what we really talk about is the fact that you do not have to go out into the field to refuel and uh, recharge batteries of a robotic system. Because imagine you're uh, these robots in a in a hundred acre field, right? Like where you can't see from one end of the field to the other end. And then on a daily basis, imagine you having to go out or send somebody out to constantly uh, babysit the robots or, or or take manual intervention action against it. You know that that does not deliver value to the customers. So we talk about the fact that it is self-sustaining, that you do not need to uh, have human intervention, and it removes the chemicals or removes the weeds without chemicals or without input costs. So it saves money for them. And well, since this is a short conversation, this is basically an introduction to what you guys are doing. And if people want to learn more, where can they go or get in touch with you? My email is kenny.li at igen.io, A-I-G-E-N.io, and come to our website and check us out. Cool. Well, Kenny, thank you. Hopefully our, our audience is going to like what you guys are doing and explore more about your company. Thank you for being our, our guest here on the Spotlight series. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching New Perspective Spotlight series. If you like our content, please consider subscribing to our social media channel and follow our podcast on your favorite streaming platform. Thanks.